So if you want to build up to a good hand a headstand, uh, you want to make sure you have a very active core and that you're able to engage and use uh, the strength uh, of your core muscles. And a great way to do that is um, just with a lot of the usual exercises such as plank. Like plank is a great move, it's called chaturanga uh, in, in yoga parlance. And uh, there are different variations that we're going to show you today. And uh, just adding a couple of these to your regular workout or even, you know, like you want to progressively build up to it is a great way to really build up. So let's begin. Medha will demonstrate uh, the plank. So let's come into Chaturanga. Yep. So in Chaturanga, you have to make sure that your shoulders and hips are in one line. So what happens is usually people put their hips up like this, which is which puts too much pressure on the shoulders and the wrists or like this which is again terrible for your lower back so in a plank you want to make sure you're pushing down firmly with your hands and your toes are also active the knees are tight the thighs are tight so you could hold this for a couple of counts and once you're done with that then you can start to take your right knee to the right elbow so basically touching yes and then taking the leg back and then left knee to left elbow and really squeezing the core so continue yeah really squeezing the core when you do that um, go ahead like right yeah so you could do about like five uh, of them on each side ten uh, if you have the time and the inclination many of you may not be able to touch the elbows um, you know at one go so let's demonstrate that like let's say you are unable to touch and you're here that's fine that's also valid because you're still using and engaging the core when you do even this movement all right okay let's come back and go into your uh, child's pose yeah, and when you're in the child's pose, it's very important for you to really relax the core, really relax your arms because you've used all of these uh, and really engaged them uh, when you were doing your practice. So now uh, we'll show you one more thing, which is again related to this movement. It is like an offshoot or it's uh, a derivative from this movement. So uh, may that come into your, uh, the downward dog. Yeah. So in the downward dog, what you're doing is you're pressing the hands down, the, uh, the feet are active, like your toes are really pushed into the floor, thighs are active. So now you want to start to slowly walk uh, towards your hands as though you want to come into Uttanasana. So you're slowly going to start walking and as you do that, you'll notice that your body weight starts to shift forward. Yeah, so your body has to get used to sort of trying to get the hip right on top of your uh, shoulders and then let's walk back into downward dog so again you're pressing the hands down which is uh, something that we did for the plank also so you go all the way back yeah and you press back and then once again you walk forward and as you walk forward you make sure that your hands are taking that weight so you walk forward in that way that you're putting the body weight yes you get used to how uh, the how it is for the shoulders to really push up and really uh, use your body weight or lift up the body weight. So let's come back once again. And this also you could do a couple of times. You could do it five times, 10 times, as slow as Medha is demonstrating. You don't wanna rush up to the hands and you know walk uh, like rush back to downward dog. All right, knees on the floor and child's pose. Yep, so there you go. Um, that's a really great way uh, not only to build uh, strength but also to start to make that mind-body connection uh, which is going to be helpful when you have to invert yourself.